Hello, welcome to episode 10 of Forest Beyond the Tracks, the Empire Fair podcast. And this is Croatia part two. So, uh, yeah, so tour number two, summer, May, June of 2014. Like we said, we stayed in the hostel this time. Big smile. Like say, is, I think it was a, in a better part of town. We were right next to our favourite shop, Consum. You can go in there, buy a sandwich, or you can buy a car tyre. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Got a great photo of Darren next to a stack of tyres. Yeah, literally, go buy a bag of rice or, you know, some jump leads, you know, it's sort, of, <laughs> sort of place it was. What does everyone remember from the hostel? Can everyone remember there was like a stuffed animal? There's, yeah, there's a big, um, is it a cheetah or a leopard or something? Le- yeah, something like that. Yeah, on the staircase, like stuffed. Yeah, it was like a massive jungle scene. It was Sorry. kind of wildlife themed, wasn't it? I remember our bathroom had some like funky animal toilet prints seats. and toilet seat. And it was, yeah, mm-hmm. there was animal theme like everywhere. Um, we had a massive room though, didn't we? Because we had like, because it was us five and, uh, and DCI came with us. Jack's, Jack's friend, who was basically gave himself <laughs> the unofficial roadie, unofficial photographer line and came out for a jolly up. So it was the six of us, but we had a hostel room that, that slept 10, I think, didn't we? Yeah, it was like a and long we, there, yeah. we, weren't we The only, we, only people in that room, apart from one night, there was like one random bloke. Is that right? Have I remembered that right? Was that the yeah. banana night? No, I don't, I don't no. think so. I think he might have said something. Yeah. There was a youth football team in the room next door, wasn't there, Jack? I, I didn't get that far, I wouldn't know. <laughs> Can you remember, I kept getting locked in the toilet. <laughs> yeah, it was yes. a dodgy lock on the door. It was a dodgy like hand or lock, and I think you had to go get the guy who ran the hostel to come and open the door for <laughs> at least twice. Yeah, he wasn't best pleased. I was like, I can't I get it open. an excellent collection of shell suits. <laughs> yeah. so, it did let you out, though, so not all bad. So what was the first gig we played that for? It was the pod room was... again at Shakovitz. Was that the first one? I think so, yeah. It was. And, um, and it was a massive letdown compared to last time. <laughs> yes. The reason being, I don't know if you remember, that there was flooding in that area. That's right. Because we had another gig cancelled, didn't we? Was that another one back at Zupania? Yes. Zupania, yeah, at the same place. We, it got cancelled. Yeah, there's flooding in the region. And they were holding like a benefit sort of to raise money at the local town hall. Hence why we played to well, we played to a fair amount of people, but not like it was last yeah. time. I think we probably went into that gig thinking, well, I might have done think it's going to be, oh, it's going to be exactly the same as last time. It's going to be so good, so good. And then the expectation, I think, was perhaps too high. We went in because this other incident that Jack mentioned as well. Yeah, I was just going to say we went in there with a dick swinging. Thinking we're back. And didn't we go on stage really late? I I've got a memory like pretty much every gig was quite late. Like they just do live yeah. music late out there. Um, and it was something like maybe even 1 a.m. midnight. Yeah. It was so late. We had to do it, start our set, which we're just not used to in this country. You know, we're usually on 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock or something. We just like just had to kill time for hours and wait for these amazing pizzas to turn up. It was a bit unfortunate, really. would have been a good gig if there was no flood and we would have had another... Another gig go back at Champagne. Just wanted to touch on a couple of other things that happened at that gig, which was my I got told my clothes that I was wearing. Now in this when we play in England, what I was wearing on stage is quite trendy, it's quite fashionable, I like to think. But out there I, I just got told I looked like an office worker. I had <laughs> had a collared shirt and some smartish trousers and shoes, which I was the sort of vibe we were kind of going for in that sort of pangs here at the time. But I wasn't really getting down with the, the kind of locals and the kind of vibe of the place. And yeah, this girl came up to me after the gig and just like, why, why are you wearing that? You should, you should be, you know, in an office behind a computer. That's one of the things that, um, that I, I've certainly noticed about us playing live is the, uh, the frank honesty of audience members. <laughs> I mean, even as recently as when we played last year at, at the old fire station after, uh, after the game, I, don't, I, don't, I usually wore vest tops or like 
t-shirts and stuff because I used to get so hot and I wore this vest top not really thinking anything of it and this bloke came up to me after the gig and he went oh yeah yeah really good set you need to get in the gym though your little stick arms yeah Ow. <laughs> um, yeah all right I guess you put yourself on a stage open for everybody's <laughs> criticism and appraisals Matt yeah. didn't some girl come up to you and so that night and told us that we play pussy rock <laughs> yeah yeah this is um another one of those great examples following on from from the previous croatia tour where yeah we we, we got called a name which i don't think was intended as a compliment um but we wasn't <laughs> sure on how to take it last time was gay rock and i'm not sure if if pussy rock is much of an improvement or a new direction for us but yeah we got called uh, pussy rock at least people were paying attention yeah <laughs> yeah, it could have been worse I'm sure it could have been worse they stayed the whole gig they watched it um, so I'm going to yeah. say they enjoyed it they were there for like um, she was getting married the next day or someone in her group from what I remember that was like yeah. their sort of last night of freedom they came to watch this English band kind of cool for us yeah, that's mm. how she chose to spend that night yeah they were talkative liked certain types of clothes to be fair their choice was limited between watching us with our pussy rock or go into a, a fundraising thing for flooding. If it's your last night of freedom, I can't imagine that's the most uplifting of uh, experiences. No. So yeah, the, so after that, the next day we had this festival, H. GF festival which I think yep. is is a sort of like an unsigned festival it was sort of a, in an industrial unit in it was really weird wasn't it it's was an industrial unit out in the countryside so there was a lot of green space all the way around and some like hills in the background they had a stage inside in this big warehouse which they stapled or bolted some cushions to to sort of a mattress wasn't it? yeah the mattress was just bolted to the side of the thing so there was stage inside, and we had, and then there was another stage outside, which we played on. I think there was a sign. Do you re- remember the sign as you walked in the door? It's like no guns allowed or something, or leave your guns. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We were just like, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking, where are we? What what sort of festival is this? Yeah, I remember we we, we were super early on, weren't we? It was sort of like yeah, we were really it was like early. Five o'clock or seven, five four o'clock. Mm-hmm maybe even earlier than that but beforehand can you remember they took us up the road a little bit and we had some amazing goulash yeah it was like an outdoor area of this like pub wasn't it yeah and i think like igor was looking after us he he sort of said yeah yeah just there's a pot over there help yourselves and everyone was looking at us thinking who are these lads what are they doing just helping themselves to our food you know but (laughs) apparently it'd all been pre-arranged i don't know but um yeah, and we were we were sat on picnic tables, weren't we? And in, in, yeah. amongst all the locals, so we were sharing a table with some yeah proper local country folk. They were just looking at us like, "You're not from around here, are you?" we were like, <laughs> "No." I remember us playing really well. Yeah, really well. Like we were on it. It was just a shame that there wasn't that many people as we'd hoped for. There was still a decent number, and. And yeah. the people that saw us were like seemed to enjoy it. And we spoke to a lot of them afterwards and they seemed to really enjoy it. But it was just a shame that we were, we were on it and we played that well. And we just the slot wasn't necessarily advantageous for us. Yeah, because I mean, afterward, when the last band went on. Well, the last band were like a, were a Serbian band. And they, apparently they were like hot shit. Like they were really famous in, in Serbia and Croatia. Yeah. And like it was rammed like you couldn't yeah. move how busy it was and everyone was jumping around and like, they knew all the words to all their songs mm. um and obviously they were playing on the same stage that we played on a few hours before and you uh, almost have that sense of ah oh, like all mm. right okay we weren't famous so it wasn't going to be the same for us but if we've just been able to have a few more people it might have been even more memorable for us can you remember do you know where we played the stage at the back there was uh some benches and we sat on the bench. I don't know if it was before or after we'd played. And we got chatting to some guys. And one of them was absolutely fucking bollock. Did he try to start a fight or something? I can't remember what he did. But his mate, the guy who looked like Alan out of The Hangover. Yeah. And I was just <laughs> like, I was attached to him all night. I was like, Alan! Because like, he was a bit smaller than me. 
And, and what like, we should say at this point as well is uh, this one, it was the day before your birthday, Jack. Mm-hmm. And, and, the, and they just provided kegs of beer for us for free. Yeah. yeah. Bands just had kegs of beer. And was it Igor or Domo or somebody else that said the famous line, oh no, the English are drinking. <laughs> yeah, word got about that we were sort of nailing beers left, right and centre. So you're there hugging Alan lookalike. Yeah, I'm like hugging him. And like halfway through the night, he goes, why are you calling me Alan? He, saw, he, he clearly not in the hangover. <laughs> I was just like, Alan. He was like, uh, this is the night when um, me and Darren went off and we, we had our little dance together and we had our, our boogie yeah. and it, proper bonding. We had a moment. moment. We did. Yeah. It's beautiful. One to remember. But do you guys remember it? Apart from the video footage, thankfully, which was being captured. Yeah, it wasn't pretty, 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 well. Pretty, pretty hammered, Darren. From what I remember, I was. If, I remember they. Um, I think you know we talked in last episode about that like rakia stuff, that alcohol. <laughs> I think someone made us some this time, and they bought us like I think it was like a plum flavor, and then they made it for us. <laughs> you know, I think they heard we were coming, so they made us some of this alcohol, and again, it's like eighty percent. I think I just started drinking that again, and then mixing with that. Um, like Oshkliko beer came we out of the back. It it's got gone. messy very, very quickly. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, next thing I know, I'm picking Matt up. I think I'm just screaming at his face. I don't know if it's something different in the way they make beer over there, or if it's just Croatia and continental Europe, or so bad we do here. But the beer over there, I mean, a it is just magical and very tasty, and wonderful to drink. But the next morning. I just didn't feel ill at all. I just woke up and it's like, this is weird. I didn't have a hangover. I felt fine. Oh, I definitely did not. <laughs> I was rotten to the core. That was a pretty bad hangover. When we left there, we were in two different vehicles, weren't we? Me and yeah. Darren were in Domo's car. Domo drove us. Mm-hmm. And you guys were with Igor. Yeah. I, I was in with, with Darren and Neil. Oh, yeah. yeah, of course you were. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's me, DCI, mm-hmm. and Tom, and the other one. Darren, you're a little bit worse aware on the way back. Oh, it's just the <laughs> talk about <laughs> kebabs and angels' bats. And... You were almost incoherent, but you were really. Con- I remember you were really concerned because at the time you were really into your fitness and you were really into eating healthy, and you mm. were just in the back of this car babbling on about how much you wanted a kebab <laughs> and how it was so bad and you felt so bad about it and. Matt got the perfect opportunity to to record what you were saying, and and I remember you saying, "Oh God," and you were asking Domo questions like, "Look, in, where in England, we? where are we in <laughs> England? In England, <laughs> kebabs are, are made out of really bad meat, but Croatia are they better? Are they made out of like angels' backs?" And <laughs> <laughs> I never got the answer, you know. So I still want to know. Um, and then little did we know that when we got back to the hostel, that's where the fun really began. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Who the fuck brought bananas? I think it was just part of when we'd been to, when we'd been to Consum and we bought our shopping. Yeah, but why, why had... bananas? Vitamin C. Exactly, you know, you yeah. need fruit and vegetables so, to recover. And... I mean, we get, back to, we get back to the room and, and say it's the six of us plus Domo in the room. And I don't, I don't really know how it started, but it just went crazy and i and it was bananas yeah (laughs) i remember there's a photo floating around i've just sat on the floor in my shirt and pants eating a sandwich that i just got from consum about 10 minutes before and it was a delicious sandwich then i think darren just was that the same night that we've been to consum in our pants was that no that, that was a different night right okay they were my pants you were all wearing my pants over our trousers, best like thing about Superman. That, yeah, yeah. The best thing about it is that it would, you had just had them cleaned as well. Like you just washed them. <laughs> yeah. Just us, yeah, just get Jack's clean underwear, just put them back on. <laughs> and let's go on a condom and see what we can get. Uh, yeah, that was great. Not for you though, Jack. Obviously, we found it hilarious. Yeah, but I think there's a cool picture of us in condom wearing them all. Strike. You have these Superman poses. Idiot, drunken, drunken English idiots. But anyway, I seem yeah. to remember like eating the sandwich, and Darren, because he ain't been to the gym for a few days, was like, oh, let's, let's pick him up. 
So he was sort of picking me up from like my underwear, like the waistband of my underwear. And, I, and at one point, he actually like had me off the ground, and I'm still <laughs> eating this sandwich. <laughs> And every time you picked him up, you could hear the, 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 the fabric of the underwear tear more and more. And before we knew it, there Jack was had no just given up on clothes <laughs> and he was bollock naked, lying on the floor eating this sandwich. <laughs> given up on clothes. <laughs> and, and, then, and then Jack decided... That now he was freed of his clothes, that he needed to go for a run. <laughs> Poor Dobbo I... stood there just going, What is going on? <laughs> and you started to run towards the door to go outside. And obviously, Matt had alluded to the fact that in, the, in one of the rooms next to us, there was an under 10s football team, like they were obviously on some kind of tour. And, it, and we were like, We cannot let Jack run around outside <laughs> naked where God knows who else might be about or whatever. And I, and I leaped over the beds to get in front of you to lock the door. Mm. And you got to the door, you tried the door and it was locked. So you were like, oh, okay. So then you just decided <laughs> to run laps of the room backwards and forwards, bollock naked. <laughs> Poor old Domo. I, again, Domo is watching you like, like watching a tennis match back and forward. thinking, what the hell is going on? And I started Ooh. to distribute bananas to everyone. Yeah, you were like Oprah. You get a banana. You get a banana. You get a banana. But then, but then it gets a bit hazy for me. I, I don't. Well, we all, we all tried to go to bed. We all tried to go to bed, and I remember everybody got into bed. And like we talked about in a in a previous episode when we were in the hostel in in Camden, and we're all giggling away. That's kind <laughs> yeah. of what was going on again here. But Jack, there was a demon awoken in you, and you were not sleeping. And I remember opening my eyes and looking down the end of my bed to see you with one foot up on on the edge of my bed, thrusting (laughs) towards me while downing a bottle of Coke. (laughs) I was thirsty, you know. (laughs) Is there any other way to drink a bottle of Coke? Not anymore, there isn't. (laughs) No. I don't remember the the big incident that we're sort of circling around here. I mean, do you want this to be shared? I'm not sure it's something you do, but apparently... No, no, okay, that's cool. No, no... uh, well, it's up to you, man. I'm like, I'm trying to save your blushes a little bit. Cause... Yeah, let's not, let's not go there. If they want it, they can pay for it on the next, you know, when we do a crowdfund me for the EP. If you want to know what happened with the banana, 100 quid each. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing you. about that, though, as well, is, is the next day when we all woke up, all really oh. kind of hazy and hungover. And we sort of said, look, last night was funny and crazy. Let's... Let's let let's let bygones be bygones. Let's let it be a memory, and let's not talk about it. And uh, and then we get on Skype with I think with with your girlfriend at the time, Matt. Now now wife, right? And the first thing she says is, "What's this I hear about a banana?" (laughs) (laughs) Oh, but yeah, it's already been circulating around. Already out before the lines were drawn in on the battle. It already been shared. Darren, didn't you have the worst cup of tea ever? It wasn't a cup of tea. That's the problem. So, obviously, over here in England, you say a cup of tea, you're going to get, you know, what do you call it, like English tea or English breakfast, breakfast tea. tea you know, that, yeah. that kind of milk, that kind of brown look. Domo wasn't with us, so we didn't have a translator. I thought, I've been here before. How hard can it be to order a cup of tea? So, over there, if you say you can have a cup of tea, you automatically get a fruit tea. So, I had like a, a red berry tea. Mm-hmm. And obviously being British and polite, I just took it and smiled and nodded it. Yep, yeah, cheers. And just threw it down the <laughs> drain. <laughs> uh, so, but I'm like you, Darren, cool. as well. I, I literally only like breakfast like breakfast tea. Like any fruit yeah. teas, herbal teas, anything like that, um, they're, they're not my cup of tea, so to speak. <laughs> hey. Your face when that arrived. We talked in the last episode, how about you were concerned that you'd be able to get chips in Croatia. Again, a couple um, of years later, you're a bit better, but still not much better, and you were not having that fruit tea. I remember on the same day, it was like a double, it was a double whammy. So we we were um, where we were staying. We were next door to there was that condom shop, but built in was a KFC. So like how we have over oh. here at McDonald's, 
there was a KFC built in. So I went over there, thought, okay, I'll try and like, I'll try and get a KFC. How hard can this go? So I wanted a, a mini fillet, just one mini fillet. And I ended up, for some reason, getting three mini fillet meals. <laughs> <laughs> I ate it, don't get me wrong, I was really full, but I was just like, fuck's sake, how are you? <laughs> like, I even pointed at the menu, I was like, that, and so I must have said three mini fillet meals. I remember that little KFC, oh. you could get like hot wings and beers, like 10 hot wings and a beer for like three quid, you're like, <laughs> giving it away. We also had another like bad meal experience like next door to the hostel. I don't know if oh, you guys remember this? God, yeah, the little cafe. Oh, it was I just like, yeah, so that like, cafe. yeah, greasy spoon cafe, and we thought, oh, where can we get for breakfast this morning? Oh, it's one that's placed in the store. Let's go in there. So I remember sitting down, and the guys who ran the ran the place seemed to just sort of double take us as we came through the door, thinking, what? Who are these people? Oh, customers. Oh, right, we're we're a cafe, right? They seem to forget. So we sat down, and the service was awful to start with. Then I think there was five or six of us and we'd all decided to go for like eggs, bacon and just like a classic eggs and bacon or something. And yeah. they, yeah, they literally like we ordered and they fucking bowled out the door to go get the fucking stuff. <laughs> yeah. It was the worst cafe you've ever been in. And when, when it eventually did turn up, cause it was like super late cause I had to go to the supermarket and go and get the ingredients and then cook it. It was the worst eggs and bacon you've ever had it was the grizzliest like fattiest bacon and the fried egg was just it was just a mush it was a disgusting breakfast that we'd waited the longest amount of time for and it was just so not worth it i just yeah it was um to say the least it was probably the worst breakfast I ever had in my life but so yeah so after we the big night out we uh we took a tram all the way to the end of this tram line and then we got a taxi to the top is it a mountain it's not a mountain is it is it kind of is a mountain yeah because it's like a yeah. ski resort mountain yeah so we got a taxi up to the top and uh this taxi driver didn't speak a word of english we were like yeah schleme which was the name of the mountain we were like the top schleme he goes oh yeah good sort of thing so we jumped in and there was this big what was it like a statue of a bear and uh, we've all, we've like all, a wooden sort of statue, yeah, cut yeah, out. like a cut. And we've all gone, oh shit, bear! We're like, ah, there are bears around there. It's like not really knowing the uh, what the animals terrain. are native, yeah, what animals are native to you know Croatia. We're all like fucking shitting ourselves. And the taxi driver's clocked it, and he's gone, <laughs> bear. <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, all right. So, um, but yeah, we got to the top. It's like a ski resort. It was what was it in the summer? So everything was sort of closed there's a little bar restaurant up there we had a pint and um i mean some of the views are amazing up there it was on this tour that we filmed the video for end of disco wasn't it mm. so a lot of those scenic shots were on this tour and there's a couple of shots of me looking out over the city from from really high up and on this um grass over ski slope and then mm. um, so yeah that, that's that's when that was and we did that uh that radio interview as well didn't we at that student union Mm. yeah yeah and tom was very popular well i just like to talk to people you know get a get a vibe of the the city the scene just Mm -hmm. you know be friendly that's what we're over there for why not i remember because that was like upstairs wasn't it like on a on a rooftop we We had had a balcony that sort of looked over the city i remember standing out on that balcony with darren just chatting away looking over the city and a part i think there's a shot of matt on that balcony that made the uh that made the video yeah, that was a fun. That was another fun little thing we got to do, which I think was organised by Igor just to promote our tour. When we we're out there. I mean, I keep calling it a tour. I mean, I don't know if you can call three dates a tour on, on both of them, but we'll yeah, we'll you that. can. We'll chalk it up. Yeah, this tour again. We were supposed to do more dates. I think originally there was five or six yeah. dates planned in, but we had to cut it short for, for a few reasons. Never say never. If tour three ever comes about, we could to go and explore some new places. It was cool. It was you know it was cool to go and play some different places. This this time which we did on the third date of this tour which was the vintage industrial bar which is a new place to us we hadn't been there on the first tour even i think it, it opened in the in the kind of time between we'd been in the city we went there on the first night didn't we for a drink yes we did oh yeah that the first night 
of the second tour. Yeah, we went there for a drink because we knew we were playing there at the end of the week. Yes. I, I remember me and Tom, we were sort of throwing shapes on the dance floor, but nobody about. It was like a Tuesday night. <laughs> First night, we're just having a great time. Let's just, you know, enjoy ourselves while we're out here. And yeah, I remember dancing like like idiots. I think you got up on the stage, Jack, and started doing some dancing well, to no one. Matt, Matt was there as well. I think we all st- we stay quite late. We, we we had a bit of a disagreement that night. Can you remember? How could I did forget? We? Yeah. Well, yeah. Jack and I did because I just bought this new camera, and I, this was like the the second time I'd used it. It's still raw. It's it. still raw. Well, I left it somewhere on the side in the bar I, was, I felt quite confident it was safe and then i walked off to another part of the bar and jack came up and brought it ne- and put it next to me where i was he goes you can't walk away from this someone could take this and as he put it down on this bar it fell off and like hit the ground hit the floor and this camera was like super expensive and i was thinking if this breaks like, i think i think what had happened i was, I was, I was holding it by the lens livid. i was holding it by the lens yeah schoolboy. and you took the bottom <laughs> And it somehow sort of like untwisted it like itself. And you've taken away the camera and I still have the lens, but I thought you took the whole thing. So I was let go of the lens and the lens has just dropped down. And then you were just like, what the fuck are you doing? I was like, <laughs> what am I doing? You left it fucking in another room. I'm bringing it to you. But yeah, after that. Yeah, we... in hindsight, that's probably a little bit harsh. Yeah, because I was obviously, we were going to film this music video and if the camera had broken, I was Ooh. just like, this, you know, what are we going to do? So uh, our final gig of that tour was at... Vintage Bar, wasn't it? (laughs) Yes. Can anyone remember when you went into the car park, what was on the left-hand side? Yeah, it was like Sons of Anarchy Zagreb, wasn't it? I mean, it was like a biker-themed bar, some sort of workshop mechanic or something. Yeah, yeah I mean, you were in your element. You just watched um, Sons of Anarchy, and you were like, got to get myself a bike. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was growing the beard. I, was, I bought the glasses. I was in. Yeah, Vintage Industrial Bar. Well, I remember the gig that we did down there. It was like a celebration of the HGF Festival. It was sort of a closing night. I just, I just, I think we haven't yet to mention that one of the bands that we played with on pretty much every day of this tour was a band called Greta. Yeah. Throughout at each date, and they were pretty, pretty decent blokes. And uh, the bass player, I remember that band was just like so much energy. It was just, it was uh, so much fun to watch. Yeah. Play. Yeah. Some, and some classic, you know, really good rock and roll like vibe I got from those guys. Nice yeah. guys. Yeah, I think they were quite well known, sort of in Zagreb. They had a bit of a following and. I think I kept in contact with one of them and they kept like uploading like new videos that they were doing and stuff. So yeah, they were sort of like I say a really good vibe. Yeah, they had a big hit, I think, when we were out there and they played it at the Regenerator Zabok night. And had there they had like a female guest vocalist. I don't know if you mm. remember this, and she came on for one song only. I think they got always like in the Croatian charts. So we were like touring with this band that was actually in the Croatian music world was actually pretty high up the food chain. And it was you know, just sort of luck on our behalf that we got to play with them. One thing I remember from that venue was that it was one of those ones where it was all on, from what I remember, all on the ground floor, but you sort of went in and it just sort of kept getting bigger and bigger. It's quite a really long venue and there's a few different sections. There's a bar section, middle sort of loungy section, and then there was a venue section a bit further back and it just kept on going and going and going. Big, yeah, it didn't look place. like much from the outside, did it? No. Apart from Sons of Anarchy, yeah, but it was a cool little venue. The yeah. the backstage, the green room thing was like to the to the right of the stage as you were looking at it, like, and it was this tiny room, but there was three or four bands all kind of packed in there, wasn't there? And um, and I remember I was feeling horrendous that like my voice had completely gone, and we were kind of in the build up to the gig, and I was just eating honey straight out of the jar and drinking like pints and pints of water. Just the, and I remember like trying to talk. I couldn't even talk properly, let, like, let alone the idea of singing. And I sat there and I was like, this is going to be a fucking disaster. But when you look at the positives, how many times do you get to play in Croatia? So even if it's a disaster, it's still going to be a pretty cool opportunity again. Do you think you I were ill? It was on my birthday as well. Oh, it was on your birthday. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? It was. And so I'd 
quite a uh, a good handful of of drunk and rowdy Croatians singing um, "Happy Birthday to Me." They believed it was a um, a traditional Croatian song, but it's like the exact same tune melody as as every other "Happy Birthday" song. Yeah. But perhaps it did originate in Croatia. I have no way. Who knows? So yeah, that was that was a fun moment. And it was a Tuesday night as well. So and it was. Yeah, it was fair fair amount of people in there for a Tuesday night. I mean, it's, I guess it's, yeah. it's a cap, capital city of Europe, so people are out and about doing stuff. But it was a lot more than you get that we've been accustomed to, perhaps on a Tuesday night at other <laughs> gigs. And that, like that, Neil said, like backstage, there was like three or four bands sort of milling about. And I remember going in there, and it was it was buzzing in there. There was such like a positive vibe. Everyone was having such a good time, just chatting, and we're like just getting on with all these people who just wanted to come and chat with us and just sort of get to know what we were doing, who we were. It was just really good, kind of good, clean fun backstage. I think even a couple of guys were playing chess. Yeah, they were. Was... Yes, yeah, yeah. You're right. I mean, that is clean. That's as clean as it gets, like backstage. <laughs> and um, we've got someone in our in our band that goes on stage with a cup with a pot of tea quite often. So that is clean. Yeah, <laughs> has been known to happen. We played um, Guess Who backstage, so chess isn't too. Well, uh, we... well, Jack played Guess Who. I was playing Guess Who against somebody who. <laughs> was guessing how to play the game. <laughs> <laughs> that tour as well, though, we were trying out a lot of the stuff from Pangs, I think, in a live environment for the first time. Mm-hmm. We were testing the water a lot, um, all three of those gigs. Cause I'm pretty sure we took the synth out there as well. So we were yeah. doing DNA Code and End of Disco and Forest Beyond the Trees for, for the first, second time. And it was quite exciting to play, obviously because no one really, well, some people knew our music, but a lot of people didn't come in fresh to it and having seen their reaction to these new songs for the first time it was quite cool to see their reactions yeah, in the, in I the think moment a lot of the time a lot of the time there might have, we might have been if not all of those gigs but certainly a couple of them we, had, we that was where we started ending the set with DNA code where previously we were always ending it with tornadoes so it was like a little bit of a shake up to our our kind of normal rhythm as well I remember I remember ending with DNA code at the the festival the night yeah. before and it and that was really good again obviously we wasn't necessarily as as busy as we wanted it to be but despite that it still got a really good reaction despite the fact that we've been doing loads of gigs in the build up to recording pangs we had still kept those songs pretty close to our chest ready for for the release of pangs in the September on that tour we filmed a lot of slash all of the end of disco video but obviously one scene in particular was was the closing scene where we're all on stage playing that was that was that, was at, that uh, was at the vintage bar wasn't it yeah and yeah i i remember that so well because i get like i said before i had no voice and i sort of shouted screamed talked and mumbled my way through most of the set and then end of disco was relatively late in the set. And obviously there was quite a lot of falsetto, quite a lot of high notes. And I had nothing in the chamber. Literally, if I tried to go the slightest bit high with my voice, like no noise came out. And I kind of dragged myself through it. It was painful. And you've got, we've got that recording in, uh, in, the music, in the music video where us all play in and, and it's like, oh yeah, what a great gig that looks like. I, at that time, I was just stood there like, <laughs> what am I <laughs> doing? <laughs> well, it's, I did include a bit of that in the Rewind the Clocks documentary. That makes it in there. There's a bit yeah, of that I gave like Yeah, I gave like a speech. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you were like struggling that much and like there's shots of you having the honey like behind Darren's drum kit and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember giving like a speech, like I was in Gladiator, to <laughs> to the to the audience again. Who pro, who I don't know the levels of English they were speaking, but I remember being like, "Look, we we're giving you everything. You're giving us everything." And I was like, just thinking, "This is the biggest load of bullshit coming out of my mouth, trying to excuse myself <laughs> for sounding fucking terrible." <laughs> but in the vintage industrial bar, that that was a bit of a train wreck at the end there, but it was still fun, and it still looks cool in the uh, in the video. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Well, it's not live music if things go right all the time, is it? No. Because um, I remember that gig as well. I, I cocked up when we started to play one of the songs. I think I misread the set list. I can't remember which way around it was, but we were either supposed to go into Wilfred or One Night in Munich. And I think I started playing the wrong bass line. And Darren was just like repeating the intro on his drums. And I was playing the wrong notes. And he was just like, what's going on? What's happening here? What's happening here? And the intro was gone for like two minutes because... By that point, it was too late to change. I just kept on playing the bass line, waiting for all you guys to change 
to what I was playing because I didn't want to like a fool in front of all these like Croats. Yeah. So, you know, I remember that being a bit of an embarrassing part on my behalf, but um, I don't think anyone noticed. Can you I don't rem- even remember that. What happened? Like, did we just join in on the song that you were playing eventually? Basically, yeah. <laughs> I just, I was just like head down, right? Just listen to what I'm playing because I know I'm wrong, but I can't let anyone else know I'm wrong or show I'm wrong. So just join in with me, guys. Yeah, and it's just like this really long intro into one night in Munich. I think. Can you remember the the next night? We it was the last night. We actually went out and had drinks with Igor. Can you remember they? We went and drunk in the hard place. They'd moved the hard place. Uh, yeah. where, where we first played the first night of the first tour they've now moved it to it was sort of like a row of shops or row of clubs or uh, bars and everything and it was like a new improved oh bar. yeah it was like mm-hmm. there were, it was like a quite a small front of the bar and then it was quite elongated down the back i've uh, i've thought of a question go on i think i know what question you're gonna say <laughs> i think i might know what this is as well a few doors long from the hard place bar yeah. There was another bar, yep. which I think you and DCI went to, had a very distinctive name. It was. Can you remember what it's called? Spunk. <laughs> there so, was a sorry, Jack, one more time? I remember, I remember now. Spunk. That's what's... Yep. And there wasn't uh, a gay bar, as far as I know. No. Wasn't that the night we walked all the way back from that area, from, from the, the hard place, and you guys were like pushing each other into bushes? <laughs> yeah. Yep. And I came back with a bit of tree lodged in my back, which we had, which um, when I got home, we had to um, kind of scalpel and cut a big chunk of my skin off to get this um, twig out. Ouch. At least it wasn't a banana. It was not a banana. (laughs) I think uh, one day, Tom, I think me, you, DCI, we rented a couple of forest bikes. Probably got a different name out there. I remember (laughs) in the middle down the main road in Zagreb, like the trams are in the middle. The c- tram and the cars share the same bit of road. I remember we're cycling along this road. I look behind and there's a tram right behind. Is it you or DCI? It was me, yeah. It was you. And this tram was literally touching the back of your wheel. It was <laughs> that close. And obviously the tram driver was like super pissed off and had to slow down. But I just remember looking behind go, he's got to pick up the pace because he's going to fucking die in a minute. We went round like all of um, around the lakes and everything. Yeah, around the Yaron, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, well, the Hold In Music Festival. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was wicked. That was wicked. We wanted to see like parts of the city that we wouldn't have got to otherwise. Um, it was just like a wicked afternoon. I did pick a really dodgy bike though because also the chain fell off at some point. So yeah. oh, I got this... a bit of the short straw on that. Is this the is this the uh, the equivalent of the broken amps? Yeah. Yeah. See. In the bike world, yeah, the yeah. rented bike world. But yeah, I was I was definitely fearing for my life when that tram was behind me because I just couldn't pedal any faster, and he was just I couldn't see the guy. You could because you're a bit further in front of me, but I just could sense this like beast of an engine machinery <laughs> behind me. You could feel it and or smell it, but I couldn't see it, <laughs> and you could just feel this thing. I was going as fast as I could, and I remember. My wallet, I always lost my wallet as well uh, out of my back pocket when I was cycling. I was like panicking. That was still there. That's probably why I was going a bit slow, making sure it was staying. And this guy, who was driving it. I thought you were going to die. Off, death by tram in Zagreb. That's a hell of a way to go. But uh, what, So what was everybody's favourite memory from Eva tour? I think mine was, was probably that, that final night on the second tour. I think even the whole day, it was just like we, we got to see more parts of, of Zagreb and that we probably wouldn't have otherwise seen. And we just sort of cut loose and, and enjoyed our time there. I think that second night of the first tour of Shagavets was probably probably a real highlight, one of the best gigs we've, we've ever done. And, and again, the fact that it was in a different country and, and people were having such a good time made it even more memorable, topped off by Matt's Olympic skill of throwing up into an iced tea bottle. Just <laughs> top, just topped off that evening. Le- that will live long in the memory now. Um, but the gig and everything around that, that one, meeting Joseph Gordon-Levitt, look-alike at the bar. Uh, yeah, it was, it was such a good night. And Darren, do you enjoy it? I did, yeah. I, think I don't really remember much from the gig, like, well, they say the gig, the whole tour. So as we've been speaking sort of throughout this one, it's got a bit of slowly been coming back, but I can't remember too much. Like, 
I'm really impressed you guys knew a lot. But I do remember the there was one day, it might have been the last day, but where we went for like a massive walk. And the, I think there was a video or a picture where we all got like this stair handrail and we all slid down together on it. By the, uh, the Dynamo Zagreb Stadium. Yeah, I think we were on the way to the zoo that day. Ah. <laughs> we, also went, yeah. we also went go-karting, didn't we? On my birthday. Yes. And they yes. had a very, very lax um, health and safety policy. You can go and do a few laps and then have a couple of beers and do a few more naps. Yeah. And there's no <laughs> safety talk, no health and safety. It's just like, there's your car, there's a couple of beers, off you go. And it, made it, it was made worse because... Our friend DCI is a trained policeman and obviously knows how to clip the back of your tyre or your car <laughs> to spin you around. Send out. you spinning around, yeah. And this, this go-kart track, there was no... There was, it was all, like, surrounded by grass and there was loads of runoff areas, but where they hadn't cut the grass, some of the, like, weeds were quite high up, sort of at eye level when you're sat down on this car. And he was just going around, just na- he, was like don- he was like Donkey Kong on Mario Kart. <laughs> kicking everybody out and he knew it and he was just like yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah like yeah. one minute i was going forward next minute i'm backwards going flying through the grass then we had a bit yeah. i was fearful that i was gonna he was gonna <laughs> flip my go-kart over it was like hit me and i was just gonna like i was gonna go off the course and then it was just gonna like roll over it was carnage because the guy yes like you say the guys running it just didn't really care i think They're the really... health and safety briefing was that one's that pedals go that one's break don't hit each other yeah, it was good. It was great fun, though. I must say, it was wicked. What was your favourite moment, Tom? I agree with Neil. Chakovets was was one of the best gigs, in my opinion, that we've ever got to experience. But I also want to say the HGF eighteen festival at Regenerator in Zabok. Second tour, second night was was just an amazing night for me as well. I really enjoyed the stage we played on, the reaction we got. The kind of just vibe of the, the place, you know, the energy that was there, the kind of uniqueness of the the venue, um, just you know, the bands we were playing with and the people we met there, which it was just, it was just like a perfect night out on the continent. It was just like just so much, so many memories, so many good memories. I thought yeah. you might have chosen. I thought you might have chosen running through the pigeons, Tom. Hmm. That was a good time. That was in the pigeons. Yeah, in the Zagreb Square. Yeah, it's in one of the videos, isn't it? One night in Munich, I think. <laughs> that makes the video. So uh, my uh, my favourite night, yeah, was uh, memory was the group of you know was uh, Chakovets. It was the drive out there, the reception we got. Everybody just wanted a piece of us, like singly, as we were like walking to the toilet or to the bar. You know, people were tapping us on the shoulders and like wanted to speak to us. The music was going down a storm, and we couldn't put a foot wrong. It definitely was probably our best gig ever. I'd say it's right yeah, up there. It's, it sure. is up there, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's either that or Paul Labour Club, you know, so. <laughs> All right, I have found another question we can end this uh, this episode on. Uh, it's a bit, of a, got raised. bit of a shit question, but right, who can get to the closest, who can get the closest, basically? How many people live in Croatia? <laughs> oh, there we go. Eh? Okay. Oh. Um, 5.8 million. 5.8 million hit straight out of the box. I'm going to go for 8.9 million. 8.9 million. Neil? 6.3 mil. 6.3 mil. I'm going to go go lower. I'm going to go, I'm going to go 3.2 mil. You said 3.2 mil. What did you say, Matt? 5.8. Neil wins it. It was 4.2 million. Oh, so well done. done. Well played. Well played. Yeah. That's so, why you go last. <laughs> that's it. You, you've learned from previous episodes. Stop blowing your load straight away. I was too keen. Yeah. Too Roy keen. Yeah. I guess that's uh, the end of the episode. Uh, anybody else got any other, anything you want to bring up? Just thanks to all the Croatia people that came to support us when we're out there. Thanks to Drazen and Igor and Yuri and Milovana for getting us out there helping us out to do both these tours thanks for having us Croatia we uh, had a great time out there it was it was amazing not just from playing the gigs but also just getting to explore the country yeah it was wicked and a big thank you to Domo again for uh, being an absolute gem so um, yeah so that's the that's the episode thanks for listening stay safe and always keep those bananas at bay yep Yep. Stay curious. See you later.
See you later. Oh.